Welcome back. Today we're taking care of another major source of heat in the Miata, regardless of whether the heat is turned on or not, the HVAC assembly. Hot coolant is always running through the heater core, and when the foam goes bad that surrounds it, heat is radiated all over the place. We're gonna replace all that foam and make things cooler and even make your AC work better. Um, I have a question. What? Would you call this a quick mod? Yeah, it only takes an hour or so. Perfect. Beyond a quick mod. Hold it. Hold it. But you have to have your dash pulled to even do this mod. But while you're in there, it's a quick mod, right? Well, s sort of, I guess. Good enough. Beyond a quick mods and hacks. <laughs> sort of. Yes. <sighs> With your dash pulled, removing the HVAC assembly starts by draining some of your coolant to get the level below the pipes. Then you can remove the hoses and rubber grommets. If these are the original hoses, this might be a good time to replace them. If not, take your time with the removal. The pipes can be delicate. To avoid making a mess, a wet dry shop vac with a small attachment will drain the remaining coolant left in the heater core. You can suck from either side. Then we can get the assembly out of the car. There are three 10 millimeter nuts holding the assembly in place. Also, remove the clamp connecting to the AC coil. Slide the assembly straight back while watching the pipes as they come through the firewall. Now, we can take a look. The assembly is an old school collection of manually actuated flaps and doors that direct the airflow from the blower to the various vents. If you're only replacing the heater cord, this is as far as you need to go. It's right under this cover. There are three different kinds of foam used and we'll be replacing all of it. After a decade or more, this foam is stiff and crumbling to dust. Not only is it not sealing well, it's also blowing in your face. The most important area for heat management are the large flaps that surround the core itself. When this foam crumbles, the core will heat up the cabin. If your AC is on, it will need to first overcome this heat before it can start working on the rest of the air. Getting access to the foam takes just a couple of minutes. Start by removing the plastic cap covering the heater core itself. You'll need to remove a couple clips that are screwed in that hold the pipes in place. Then you can slide out the core and inspect it. I've replaced my core before, but after inspection now, it's looking like it's on its way out. I ended up replacing it again, but this time with an aluminum one from a later Miata that is much more durable. The assembly comes apart in two halves. They are held together with small spring clips that pop out with the help of a flathead screwdriver. The probably disgusting interior of the assembly is revealed and your foam may look like this or it may be missing completely and now is a thin layer lining your interior and or your lungs. The flaps are connected to a rod that goes through each side of the assembly. You don't have to touch the rotating parts on the side. Instead, just use a flathead to unclip a retainer. With this release, the rods will just slide out. While the flaps may be different sizes, they all work the same. They can only go in one way. The end has a flat section with a small notch for the retaining clip. Remove the old foam and adhesive with a wire brush. Once that's done, you can wash it with some soap and water or spray it down with a degreaser like brake clean. Make sure to let everything fully dry though before proceeding. The spring clips looked rusty so I hit them with some rust protectant paint. I did the same with the control cable retaining clips as well. The first foam used is some 1 8 by 1.5 inch pipe wrap. This had the highest heat rating I could find at my local hardware store and was the perfect thickness. This is the most important one because it seals off the heater core itself. Some of the flaps use one kind of foam and some use two. 
The other foam I used was called camper shell foam and it was 3 16 by 1.5 inches. It's used to seal off the other vents when the flaps are closed. To decide which to use, try to gauge the original thickness and replace with similar thickness of the new foam. You can lay multiple strips beside each other as needed. The adhesive backing is pretty good and will not come off if you prep the surface really well. Pay special attention to the edges, making sure they fit just right and don't go past the edges and don't catch on anything. Do both sides and test your results back in the assembly. The foam surrounding my aluminum heater core was in good shape so I didn't need to replace it. Now is a good time to clean out the assembly plastic of any dust and debris. As they always say, reassembly is the reverse of disassembly, but I'm not going to lie, it can be a little fiddly. Make sure each flap rod is aligned and fully engaged with that retainer clip. Once your dash is back in, you won't be able to adjust anything. Getting the two halves together can be made easier by letting gravity help. Lay it on its side to help get everything aligned. The final type of foam is a fairly soft open cell rubber that's half an inch thick by three quarters of an inch wide. This goes around the main opening and mates up to the vents in the dash. For a final bit of heat blocking, I'm going to put a strip of the camper tape in the plastic core cover and also use some half inch pipe tubing around the pipes where possible. The cover goes back on with plenty of clearance for all the additional foam, but you can't cover the areas that the pipe retainer brackets go. Remember, the pipes need room to go through the firewall, and a few inches will stick out on the other side. To finish things out, I'm putting a bit of silica grease on the moving parts. I like Shinitsu grease because it lasts for years and it's what all the Japanese brands use from the factory. Just press them in with your fingers, especially on any metal to plastic parts. With that done and everything working correctly, we can get it back in the car. You'll be able to enjoy a cooler cabin when you want it, air going through the right vents, and a more efficient AC system. Don't forget to reconnect your hoses, refill and bleed your coolant, and don't be like me and almost forget to put back the assembly to AC coil clamp. That is it for today. If you're new, consider subscribing. I do videos on everything from quick mods to maintenance to high performance tuning and builds. Thanks for watching.